Committee of Stevens Point Public Protection Committee meeting, recorded September 9, 2019. Good evening, I'll call the City of Stevens Point Public Protection Committee uh, to session at 6 o'clock p.m. Um, I, I, there's seats up here for folks standing. If there's too many folks, there's an overflow room, but I, I suspect this one will go pretty fast. First item on the agenda is the license list for new operators, uh, bartenders licenses. Chief, any issues? No issues. Okay. Um, anybody? Approval. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Uh, second item is a Class B fermented malt beverage and Class C wine license for Adventure 212 Fitness. Um, it's for a period starting on September 17th. Any issues there? with those guys getting a license no they had a license previously when the bistro closed down they okay. terminated that license they're starting up a new restaurant and thus they're applying okay. for a license again okay well, i would like to to move to approve that um, class b fermented malt beverage and class c wine and license for adventure 2 and 12 fitness okay we have a motion do we have a second second, second. by elder dalton uh any further discussion um, anybody here from Adventure 212 want to say anything? Okay, uh, we have a motion on the floor. All those in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. That is approved. Third item on the agenda is a change of agent for Sheryl Sales Corporation, 2201 Madison Street, Stevens Point. Melissa Wanta replacing Sean Quirk. Any issues there, Chief? No one checking with it. Everything's good with us. Thank you. Okay. Move um, approval of the change of agent for sure. Okay. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That's approved. And item number four, we have two requests for special events or street closings. Uh, the first one is the Purple Ribbon Walk. Uh, Portage County Creative Community Response Team, uh, September 30th, 2019. Chief, I believe this one they've had in the past. That is correct. Uh, any changes or deviations, any issues? No, and, and again, it's for a great cause, uh, recognizing you know, victims uh, with uh, domestic violence, and so it's an excellent opportunity to make, bring awareness. Uh, let's see. It, I'm going to, because it's a very important issue, I'm going to read a little bit. Is there someone here from the event that would like to say anything? Okay. Um, the fourth annual Purple, Purple Ribbon Walk will be held on Monday, September 30th. After the release of the 2018 Wisconsin Domestic Violence Homicide Report by End Abuse Wisconsin, silent walks will also be held in Madison and Milwaukee. So this is something that is not just our community, but um, raising awareness to domestic violence. Um, I, I think we can take both of these with one motion. So the second one is our frostbite race, the YMCA frostbite race on December 7th. Also a recurring event. Uh, Chief, I don't think we've had any issues with them. Um, okay, and I don't think I've got anything else. Let's see. Um, a family tradition in central Wisconsin, this road race and family fun walk offers support and promotes physical activity and community wellness. And they have, um, all ages can attend. It's not just one great big long marathon, those of us that can't walk very far anymore. Um, <laughs> any issues with that one, Chief? No. No. So, okay. Hi. Elder Nabel. Thank you. I would like to approve. Uh, uh, the request for both of these events that are very large and important to our community request to hold events for street closing for the purple ribbon walk portage county and also the ymca frostbite race 
Okay, we have a, a second. motion second by Alder Dalton. All those in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, those events are approved. Next item on the agenda is an ordinance amendment, chapter 24, section 24.56, possession of non-tobacco smoking products by minors. And I believe the amendments are to change uh, that from um, vapor and non-tobacco smoking products. I know there's been a lot of stuff in the news lately about serious illnesses associated with vaping and how easy it is to change things in your little vape thing. I don't know, not anything I've ever done. Um, but it, the intent is to widen this from just tobacco vape things to other non-tobacco vaping items, uh, including things from industrial hemp, which is legal in Wisconsin, but nobody knows the health effects. It's so minors, we'll, all, just this is minors, two minors, minors yes, only. two minors. So questions from the committee, discussion from the committee first, and then we'll go to the floor. Uh, I'm just looking for a justification. This seems, I know this is a, a new issue in headlines, and I haven't heard of many other communities um, codifying this, so I'm just wondering where the impetus came from. I, I Certainly, I can clarify that. that. Um, it actually doesn't have anything to do with vapor products. This has to do with uh, items that are designed to be ignited and smoked and, and inhaled, but are not tobacco containing. And it per in particular arose from a citation that was issued to a minor who had uh, industrial hemp cigarettes uh, on school grounds. Uh, came in, talked to the parents, talked to the defendant, and I determined that by the strict letter of the ordinance, uh, that that was not actually a violation. Uh, these were a industrially manufactured product with a, a box with a label and a brand and everything, hemp cigarettes. They had a filter on them. You know, perhaps some people here have seen them, but some, something I wasn't familiar with when I saw it. Uh, but clearly not something that uh, should be possessed by minors or uh, brought into schools. Uh, so uh, there's kind of a shortcoming in terms of, you know, a lot of these products are moving pretty fast and, uh, you know, legislatures move slowly. Uh, so the, the primary concern here was with regards to the, them being in schools, uh, but this is just to uh, create a provision under which something like that actually could be cited. Uh, now, just to clarify, with regards to minors receiving citations of this type or any type, really, uh, when they come into the municipal court, it's more a matter of uh, coming up with a, a learning moment. Uh, we, you know, we sit down and talk with the parents, talk with the kids, and and come up with uh, an outcome that's appropriate. You know, if it's a 14-year-old who you know, gets a hundred-dollar ticket, it doesn't make any sense to have a monetary penalty. It usually, be you know, primary interest in, in is what, what have the parents done to address it at home. Sometimes they've gone out of their way and really uh, gotten serious about it. Sometimes you end up having more of a teachable moment for the parents than the kids. Uh, but this is just to have, have there be an ordinance that actually brings those particular products under the umbrella of uh, this, this prohibition. So. Any questions for the city attorney? I know this kind of came out of a request from the school security officers not being able to tell what kids were vaping in their things is so in order to to allow the police staff to better handle things in school um, we changed this to not selling these things to minors so this just it kind of expands that to non tobacco type things non-tobacco products that are designed to be, to be ignited burned. and mm -hmm. the inhaled. combustion product inhaled. So not just vaping, but uh, anything like that. Right. Any questions from anyone in the audience? Comments? I'd, just like to make a, I'd like to comment? make a comment as, as a secondary teacher in the past. I think it's very important that we get ahead of this and not wait till legislation slowly drags its feet through this because um, it's important to have, parents don't always know what's happening. 
you know, you can blame the parents, but parents don't know everything that's going on at school and what their kids are doing. It's important that this gives a great opportunity to bring that, that information to both. And it's educational and it's for really not fine, it's for educational. And I think it's real important to have that happening in our schools. Anybody else? Anybody from the audience? Okay, so would be looking for uh, a motion. Alder Nabel. I would like to uh, recommend that we approve this ordinance amendment, Chapter 24, Section 24.56, Possession of Non-Tobacco Smoking Products by Minors. Okay. I'll second that. So, uh, any other questions or comments? Okay, uh, we have a motion to accept the ordinance amendment. Um, all those in favor would vote by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that motion carries. And we had a late minute addition on Friday uh, for the parking amendment that had been in public works, which is probably where it should stay. Um, I think we certainly could look at some of the, could look at the ordinance and make any recommendations about changes or whatnot. But it seems to me that this is under the purview of, of public works at this point. So um, I don't have my copy with me, unfortunately. Yeah. I left my cell phone at home today. So I don't know the language that was changing. But Alder Dalton, I think this is something that you brought forward. Yeah, so, so I'll this, let you this is basically a version 2.0. Um, we had a late discussion around 11 p.m. Um, last month about this and so um, some of the concerns that were brought up was the downtown area um, so in this second version um, I added just a prohibition for downtown parking to kind of clear up that otherwise same um, justification um, applies that our current system um, is really quite burdensome both on the enforcement side and also for the users needing to go through the passport app to purchase a permit that costs three dollars and twenty five cents um, the system is regressive and disproportionately burdensome to our working poor and a lot of people that need to maybe shift to their car car parking arrangements overnight often to go to a job that maybe starts at four or five in the morning um, and another concern that was brought up last month was the um, different types of vehicles that uh, might be parked and we do actually already have some code that addresses this under miscellaneous parking restrictions in the chapter 9 um, section Q number 3 parking heavy vehicles um, in residential districts it enumerates um, uh, additional types of truck tractors semi trailers and other vehicles over seven or six thousand pounds that are not allowed to be parked um, in residential districts so I think that can alleviate some of those concerns about people just leaving large vehicles overnight um, and further research for this system the straight alternate side is utilized in um, the cities of La Crosse and Wausau both which are river communities that have a lot of one-way streets rolling through them They're, they have university campuses and so I don't think that there is anything unique to the infrastructure of Stevens Point that would prevent the proper maintenance of the streets proper enforcement and proper operations and so um, I guess I would encourage my colleagues here to support the adoption of this amendment Alder Nabel. I do have a lot of questions on this. First of all, we got this very late and I don't have a copy of it also. And I thought it was going to be in the other one, so then under the public works, so I'd look it up on my phone then. Um, I'm confused with it. Is this saying that there's no parking overnight downtown? Because that's what it sounded like. Between so 2.30 and 6.30. So you cannot get, you cannot park there at all. Nobody can. So what about people that are maybe- As it's currently. Yeah drinking a little too much they now cannot they won't be able to get a permit or not get a permit whichever way not have any place to leave their vehicle downtown if they are not if they are inhibited and should not be driving there's sort of the, there's still the permitted lots i believe and if you'd like to make an amendment to i'm just allow wondering how the do they permits. move their car then to that permitted park if they're not supposed to be able to drive I, I, 
I'm just confused on. I think that's an issue that currently is a problem. So, <laughs> and then the second question I had was when um, streets are like on one of the streets near me, Briggs Street, there's only parking on one side, which during the day, which is the south side of the street. Um, we're looking at, and I agree that we should be doing odd even for day, night. But then what happens, as I've been seeing happen, it's getting confusing to the students near me, that park um, at night, they parked on the even side like they should the other day, but the car was still parked that way on the wrong side of the street at 10 a.m. So there's no parking on that north side of the street during the day normally. Yeah. What happens? Do they get ticketed? Or are they? Yeah, the these articulated system in this ordinance is that if any um, any restrictions that would supersede this. So also, I live on Church Street. There's one you can't park on one side. You wouldn't park there overnight. You would continue to park on the side where parking is. So they legal. should have moved over then at six thirty seven. No, they should have just continued to stay on the single side where parking is allowed. Which, but they were on. For the overnight, they were on the north Chairman, side. I believe I'm, I'm not uh, understanding. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, isn't public works handling this? Isn't this where it belongs? Why are we in public protection talking about parking? Uh, yeah, that's. Somebody explain that to me. That's kind of my feeling as well. It seems like this has been lodged in the public works committee, and it seems like this is a, a, a way to hijack what they're doing uh, to committee shop for a better outcome. While I generally support some kind of overnight free overnight parking, I don't know this. Does this address uh, people who live in the neighborhood who right. get there's need to a get lot a more? There's a lot more areas here that need to be discussed. I, I do agree. I think it needs to be in the Board of I, Public I Works. I will say that this was submitted on Wednesday for the Board of Public Works, so That's I'm also I did, I equally as that. confused that it is on public protection. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, and, and to answer um, Alder, um, no, I'm flustered, sorry, Phillips' Phillips. question, I, I think it, the hard part about all of this is it does not just affect a department or two, it, it affects people. And it's affecting many people that have areas that now have paid parking put into their, their neighborhoods. And so I'm getting questions that I can't even answer to anybody. It should be on the right committee, which should I be do agree. not here. Right. And it needs to be maybe an open discussion so that people can weigh in on this. It is a big issue. <laughs> it is. Thank you. I'll it's, stop there. It's, uh, name and address. Orrin Jacobson, 1579 Church Street. <clears throat> I appreciate all the people saying that they're concerned this isn't the wrong committee, um, but to basically punt this again when that's what happened when I came to the last meeting where there was a sign instead of actually having the discussion, at the end of the day, this amendment is gonna come to all of the older people if it gets passed out of committee. Um, and I keep hearing that each time this comes up that a lot of the discussion is about parking generally parking during times that an overnight parking ordinance does not apply to. So parking at 10 a.m., for example, Alder Person Nebel is not addressed by us changing the overnight parking. That's addressed by the daytime parking rules, which I don't believe are proposed to be changed in this overnight parking ordinance. So it was put on the wrong committee to punt it again so that it can maybe come back to that, that other committee. So I have to come to a meeting a third time just to discuss it um, is pretty annoying. Um, I would appreciate considering that all the older people have a responsibility, even if for whatever reason this was put not by the older person proposing it, um, but it's unclear by who on this committee that the committee discuss it and move it forward so that some action can be taken on it. Because each time it comes up to say, we can't have this discussion, we're not ready again, sorry, it's been a month. So I think it was pretty clear what was gonna be in front of you, whether it was on this committee or another. Thank you. May I respond at all? I'd, I'd really like to make a response that I totally agree with you. I've been working on this for almost a year. Um, it does affect daytime parking because whatever happens at nighttime, if there's only one side that has parking, people that park there that night, then where, what are they doing the next day in the morning with those cars? Where are they putting them? All of this is all correlated together. And the reason that there has not been a decision made on these things is because we can't have an, a, 
we can't have a quorum. And so it goes to the departments. And yet they're, the departments aren't always aware of what's happening right where we live, all of us, where it affects us. And so it's been a very frustrating <laughs> for me for a year. And, and I totally understand what you're saying, and I have been into departments, and we have a lot of issues that are much more than just making a simple decision, but software that doesn't work, that isn't compatible with the police department, with our city's department. So there are so much, many more entities. I, I, I can't even, I just want you to be aware you're not alone, that we are working on it, and it's not, I wish it was simple. I would like this to have been done over maybe six months ago, so I could have told all the students that live near me, all my residents that live by me, myself, who have gotten I don't know how many tickets this summer. So it definitely affects people, and I do understand that. So You're not alone. I believe in your neighborhood. Uh, during the day, you can only park on the south side of the street. Correct. But during, after 6 p.m., you can park on both, correct? No. No, it's just the one. Okay. Just one. But there are some neighborhoods where that's the case, where you can park that's on both sides so of the street confusing. at 6 p.m. Yeah. So it's like, where do we yeah. park? It's confusing. And I think the reason this was put off at Public Works was to allow some time to work through some of those definitions and some of those sticking points. And I really would rather keep it with Public Works. I appreciate the fact that that you, I mean, I've, I've come to these prior to being an alder at different times in different months on an issue that gets carried over. I, I appreciate the fact that you take time to show up and have an opinion. Um, but sometimes government works more slowly than we would like, but we want to get it right, not get it done fast. Um, I don't think it's this committee's responsibility to settle parking problems in the city. It's public works. Let's leave it there, not interfere with what they do. Uh, how was this, was this stated, um, since I don't have the amendment? It's an action item, if you choose to. Okay. Alder Nabel? I would like to propose that we do not take an action on this, on this committee, and that we have it discussed again tonight on the Board of Public Works so that it's no, still in the same. It cannot be on the because it has okay, it's, it hasn't know. been published. Okay. And and for this it's to not get ready. Added, it's not ready yet. Um, I would just like to say that I respectfully disagree with all my colleagues here, and I think that the enforcement of the system is well within the ver purview of public protection, and <laughs> the fact that uh, we we may not have taken the time to review it ahead of time. This system and what is proposed here is not substantially different from what was reviewed last month, um, uh, with the exception of the downtown area that was added. Um, I have a motion. Second. Need, okay. I have a motion and a second to table the table action to to not do any action. Just. No, I don't think that was the word. Refer, refer this. Take, we can't table. We have no action. Yeah. Uh, public protection do anything with parking. It is strictly a public works issue. If we table it, it means we're going to talk about it again. And I don't okay. think we should be talking about so it. So the motion is to... I, did she say table? I don't think you said or table. Or to postpone it. Postpone it. Well, I'll second whatever she wants. Okay, we have a motion to postpone in a second. I see President Johnson over there. Yeah, I, number one, for all those people who move the microphone don't move the microphone so no offense just you grabbed it like you were gonna kill it so um, <laughs> he felt like it though. yeah he felt like it um, Melissa Johnson district 5 council president um, I number one I don't think there's anything that prohibits public protection from taking action on an ordinance change and I could be wrong and our where is he is not in here oh, he's over there um, so I'm just saying that I don't think there's anything that prohibits it, nor do I think there's anything in our ordinance that specifically says this is the absolute purview of public works. So saying that, um, this, this ordinance isn't a lot different than Wausau's. <laughs> they figured it out, and they have an area of the, the city that's by a university with a lot of, and they have 
students who do stay there. So it's not, people say it's a two-year campus. It is a two-year campus that behaves like a four-year campus. Um, they have areas of the community where there is paid parking and during the day, but then allows the alternate sides overnight. So this isn't dissimilar from our neighboring communities. They figure it out. Um, and I appreciate that the downtown area was excluded, and I thank Alder Dalton for taking care of that. The fact that it's on the wrong committee is somewhat irrelevant, at least in my opinion. So, and I wouldn't table it. I would postpone it so that it could, if, if, if that is the, the intent of the committee. Tabling means we will never talk about it again. Postponing means we'll take action on it later. Okay. Anybody else from the audience? So to come back, we have a motion to postpone and seconded by Alder Phillips. All those in favor of postponing this discussion at this time tonight would vote by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay. Um, and that is carried and it is postponed. And we are adjourned at 626. Stevenspoint.com slash videos.